Hey everybody, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy, where the proof is in the singing. I'm continuing my series on taking these amazing isolated vocal tracks. Uh, I'm doing a singing tutorial, a vocal analysis, uh, a writing analysis, talking about composition, instrumentation, you name it. Next up, Klaus Mein, the band is the Scorpions. I'm gonna take on Still Loving You, uh, one of the most epic ballads, maybe one of the most epic rock ballads of all time. We'll get to that in a minute. But before we get started, if you wouldn't mind, please like and subscribe to my channel. That would be awesome. That way I could keep um, notifications of more cool videos coming your way. I also have a singing course. The course is called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else. You can find it right here at kentamplinvocalacademy.com where I have a free singing forum of about 25,000 singers over they're all talking about how to get great at singing. Now, before we get started, I want to talk a little bit about Klaus, the Scorpions, their producer at the time, Dieter Dirks, and so on. Many years back, 1983, I think it was, something like that, it was a long time ago, I was signed to a band, or not signed, excuse me, I was in a band, and um, I was in the band for about four years, and we struggled really hard. We were an LA band, and we really worked our butts off to try to get a record contract. And finally, after many years, and really kind of thanks to Don Dawkin, um, we were able to connect with the producer of the Scorpions. His name is Dieter Dirks. Now, Dieter had a studio in an area called Stommen. It's uh, just outside of Cologne, Germany, and um, Dieter, invited the band to come over and it was cool we did and we basically got signed to this producer Dieter Dieter Durst ironically too I want a little side note um Dieter's company Dirk Studios recently contacted me because I guess they're restarting up the studio and they're looking to do um an academy there and was were wondering if I would be willing to participate in a in a singing academy I guess uh, in Stallman back at Dirk Studios in Germany I haven't responded back yet because I'm not sure if I can do it or not but anyway but I you know so I have a little bit of a back story with this but now in this band that I was in um it was it was tough to be in this group to be candid and so I just kind of bowed out at about the four year mark even though we'd gotten this record deal uh, with Dieter and you know I was pretty distraught and pretty upset and I just got you know it is what it is and you know it's really not much I can do about it but I wound up getting a call from uh, Gabby Hoffman which is um, and you might know Wolf Hoffman the guitar player um, they were looking for a replacement for Udo Dirk Schneider for the band Accept so I flew out over Christmas uh, I forget what year I was like 85 or 84 I forget look it up when Udo left the band and um, and you know they kind of offered me the gig it was loose and but I at the time I had gone over there and I just started a, a new band called Shout. And uh, it was uh, it was actually a Christian metal band. And I just felt that my, you know, I, I just couldn't start something and just not finish it. And we were in basic tracks. And so I went ahead and I, I did Shout instead of doing Accept. True story. So, um, and they were kind of bummed and I was kind of bummed because they're really cool guys, good writers. It was gonna be a great opportunity. But, you know, I just felt like that Shout was a band I was supposed to do, so I did it. I felt like I prayed about it. I felt like God said, you know, hey, do Shout. And so that's what I did. Anyway, but I did get a chance to work with Dieter for about a week. He's a fantastic uh, producer. A lot of crazy ideas, to say the least. And the studio was absolutely phenomenal. Just state-of-the-art, top-rate gear, beautiful rooms. They even have like a little motel for people to stay and stuff, a, a, a full blown, you know, rest or not restaurant, but kitchen and, you know, cater just, you know, in a beautiful area. But anyway, so I wanted to say that because I did get a chance and I've also met, you know, the band backstage at a Monsters of Rock uh, festival and, and whatnot. But so as we start this, I want to say that Dieter had said that Klaus would come in at, you know, eight or nine at night and he would sing till three or four in the morning. He would do this night after night after night when they're recording, you know, their vocals for the records. And he also said that not only did he never tire, but you know, that they could literally just, you know, play with all kinds of different ideas. And, and, and um, I guess class was just really easy to work with and so forth. So, but this song is particularly interesting for me because it's maybe one of the greatest rock ballads of all time or metal ballads of all time. They weren't really a metal band, a hard rock band, um, but they sort of be call, called that when they <laughs> everybody put on the clothes and the hair and then everybody became metal in the 80s, right? But anyway, so what's also interesting too is the dynamic range of the song. We're gonna talk about that as we go. And one more thing is that, um, you know, Klaus uses a lot of nasality and I know that Klaus has had some surgery here recently and has recovered and the band has lowered the keys to some of the music live so we could still do it. But, but I wanna point something out that's pretty stinking important. And that is that Klaus 
was the guy out front in the band being kind of the only real vocalist in the band. Now this is interesting because being a metal band, that's kind of one thing to kind of hide behind big guitars and stuff, but it's another thing to really not have anybody else singing much background vocals and you have to sustain the night, every night, night after night with no relief. I mean, if you got Bon Jovi, you know, you got Richie Sambora could probably help out or you got other band members and other, other bands that could step up to the plate, probably run in some tracks or you know, have all these big things of background vocals for those bands back then for the background vocal side or some samples on keyboards or whatever. And, uh, but not in the case of the Scorpions, you know, there are a few bands like that. So kudos to Klaus, man. He's been out there doing it a long time, still kicking some major butt. So I got to say that uh, as we're going through this. So let's listen closely to the dynamic range of this. Here we go. Time, and it's time to win back your love again. Now, get this. So time, it needs time. Do you hear all that air that he's using? Listen real close. Time, and it's time. He's actually kind of whisper vocal. Time, <laughs> time, <laughs> pitch. Time, it needs time to win back your love. Right, and then he goes into this really, really nasality of kind of vocal thing that going on. Now, again, Don Dawkins was like this too. So, and thank you, Don, for you know hooking us up with Dieter. That was awesome. Um, but there's you know there's this heavy nasality that happens, and then there's also um, this overuse of air that we've talked a lot about, and the overuse of air is the arch enemy to the voice. So it's no surprise that Don you know is is, is working out some vocal stuff and. Klaus is working out some vocal stuff, and Bon Jovi, we just talked about him, is working out some vocal stuff. You really gotta be able to manage this air, and if you don't, it could dry out the chords, and then you know, you're know you literally taking a flamethrower of air across your vocal folds, drying them out, then they get swollen, then you get what's called lack of phonation or dysphonia. When that happens, you, you wanna pull the chords even tighter and slam more air across the chord, because you gotta finish the night, night after night after night after night, you're in all these different time zones and everything you know, is being thrown at you, um, which is a really tough place to be. So. That's why we emphasize technique, that's why we emphasize range, good vocal health and stuff. I cover all of this in my singing course. Listen to it again and then listen to it when it goes, win back your love, you know, it goes right into like a, a heavier sound. But notice when he does it, he compresses the air when he goes up as opposed to when he's whispering at you at a lower volume. Here it is. Time, and it's time to win back your love again. You know, I will be there, right? Just boom, boom, like just immediate uh, velocity. I will be there. I will be there. Right, real airy. Next line, here we go. Love, only love can bring back your love someday. Cool. Now, for me, one of my biggest goals when I write, and for you guys that know me, know that I have 40 records out. A lot of people say, Ken, you're always doing covers. Why don't you get a, get a life and do some original music? I have 40 records out and have done hundreds and hundreds of original songs in film and television. Go to imdb.com and look at my name or go to my Wikipedia and see the records I've done. So I am pretty familiar with you know original music and cover songs. And in this case, what I wanna point out is a few more important things is that haunting melodies are so timeless and beautiful that you could hear it today, you could hear it 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years, 30 years, whatever, all, the, all this song, 40 years, 30 years, 30 plus years ago. And it still is amazing and beautiful and just gut-wrenching, heart-wrenching to, to this day. Now, the other thing is, is at this time when this song was out, it owned planet Earth. But for you guys that aren't familiar with the Scorpions, how ironic for a band to, you know, have albums like Virgin Killer and, you know, some of the other, you know, Blackout and all these other crazy heavy duty songs, like, you know, like a, a German Judas Priest or something almost with, you know, maybe more melodic vocals, but to be that heavy, but to also have maybe two of the greatest rock ballads of all time. Maybe only rivaled by foreigners I want to know what love is and maybe another song or two, but not many. So they had this and when to change. And so in when you I was in Europe at the time when this came out and it was being played a lot, you couldn't go into a grocery store. You couldn't get into a taxi cab. You couldn't go anywhere where this song wasn't being played all over Europe. Not just Germany, 
all over Europe. It owned Europe. So it was, it's amazing that a heavy rock band like that could have pulled that off, but it's because of this melodic minor, harmonic minor um, scales that Michael Shanker used way back in the day, Uli Roth used back in the day, uh, you know, and, and again, um, I, I, Matthias Jobs is also one of my favorite guitar players because I love that Michael Schenkel, er, Schenker era. But Rudolf Schenker, who wrote the song, he actually does the solo in this, uh, just wrote these haunting melodies, absolutely stunningly haunting melodies. So I wanted to I wanted to say that because this is not a typical write a rock ballad, you know, 80s medley kind of thing. This is very well crafted, very European sounding music, which is, to my, in my opinion, some of the best, uh, you know, rock music that's ever been created. So. My opinion. Here we go. Fight. Be my fight. To win make you love again. I will be there. I will be there. Now, when I did my version, you know, fight. Be my fight. Right? To win back your love. You know, it was really hard for me to find that. So I love, I was like, in like, it was almost like Dio singing it rather than, you know, Klaus Mine, which kind of takes away from the sexiness of it. It takes away from the intimacy of it. So please check out my version in the description. I think you'll like it, but I, I sang it a little more like me or like a heavier Paul Rogers, you know, D almost Dio-y in some ways, you know, kind of sound or even Coverdale as opposed to the classiness of the way he treated it because he was very, just very sexy on it because it is, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a love song, you know, it's a fight for valor, fighting for my woman, I'm gonna do anything, what's it gonna take to get you back, you know? Um, anyway, so I'm still loving you, right? And uh, <laughs> I wouldn't think that a band that writes a, has an album called Virgin Killer could actually come out with a, a gorgeous, beautiful, romantic love song like Still Loving You, right? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, if you listen to, you know, uh, Early Morning, the Sun Comes Out, da -da -da -da, you know, um, actually, I probably shouldn't quote some of the lyrics, but if you look at across some of their lyrics, they're very rock and roll. Let me just say that. All right, let's let's move on. Here we go. Love, only love can break down the wall someday. I will be there. I will be there. Now, for you, you that don't know this song, I want to bring in the instrumentation for a second because there's only two chords going back and forth in this. And um, it's important that you guys hear how well, whoops, sorry. It's important that you hear how well the exchanges of these melodies over these simple chord structures that are going by. Check it out. Right here. So beautiful. Now, they take forever to get to the chorus. If you listen back, it's a really long couple of verses, big intro, whatever, but the song is so hauntingly melodic that they can get away with that because it's that beautiful. Really, it's like a classical piece, like a classical composer, like a good German classical composer or, or whatnot. So here's the chorus. Now, again, if you listen to any of the early Scorpion stuff, the Uli Ross stuff and all this, you can hear where these influences came from. They're all kind of from that same, you know, Michael Schenker camp, you know, family camp. So, but now I want to put, take the, this out and listen to the solo vocal alone. And this is important because um, you, if you hadn't heard the, the instrumentation with it, it, it doesn't carry the same weight of how powerful it really was. And the other interesting thing is, 
I would try to change things that killed our love. The English not being their first language, I love the simplicity of the choice of how they describe things. You know, I, got, I have to say something, a couple things, it's really funny. Um, I was working with a singer, it's a girl, she's from Russia. You guys may even know who this is. She's uh, gone on to do some really cool stuff. She's just recently moved to the States. And we were working on some stuff and we had put up a video and it had, you know, like 5,000 views or something. And she didn't have a single thumbs down on YouTube. And then, the, you know, a few hours later, she got one thumbs down and we were doing a Skype session that, that morning, uh, morning my time, her, night her time. And she says, well, there's always one hole in the ass. <laughs> That's great. Instead of there's always one asshole, there's always one hole in the ass. And I, I kind of repeat that now because it's really funny the way, uh, you know, the, the get lost in translation or the way someone else would say it in another language and thinking that they're translating in your language, but it's even better and it's even funnier at that point. So um, anyway, so I love how uh, different cultures and different whatnot, when they're retranslating some, something, they have a different kind of spin on it, different perspective. And so, you know, things that killed our love, you know, da, da, da. You, if you go through the lyrics of this, you realize that um, they're using la language that's kind of universal, everyone would understand, rather than something so high and lofty and so poetic that um, is maybe above people's heads. So I just thought I'd throw that in there, I thought it was kind of funny. All right, here we go. Right and so strong that I can't get through. Is there really no chance? To start once again, I'm loving you. I love that. Uh, instead, uh, he doesn't go to a blues minor third. He goes, uh, right, that kind of spooky note. That's great stuff right there, guys. Really good, man. Try, baby, try. To trust in my love again, I will be I will be I love this part. I will <laughs> so Klaus. To shed and be thrown away, I will be yeah. Love, our love shouldn't be thrown away. Uh, thrown Right? Our love shouldn't be thrown away, right? So it's such a great line. Okay, and then the chorus repeats itself. And, and again, it kind of is the same thing until it gets, still, still loving you. Again, all love, still loving you. Very romantic to the very end, okay? So we have this. Now, one of the things that's interesting is later, you know, as I look back at this, there is somewhere between wanting to have the intimacy of the song and somewhere for me wanting to have a bigger vocal, okay? And as much as like when I think about, you know, um, Matthias Jabs and um, I think about, um, yeah, that other guy that was playing guitar on this record, <laughs> sorry, Shanker, Rudolf Shanker, uh, they had what was called like the brown tone, that really fat, gnarly, beautiful brown tone. I got to watch how they mic'd it. And they used an RE20, Okay, and they had Marshall cabinets, they're Marshall amps. They had an RE20 that was, you know, right on, on one thing, I think they had a 57 on top, but they were using RE20s for you guys out there, we're like halfway between the paper and the cone, about this far off the grill, and it's pretty much all they used, and they did a you know, stereo track of it, and it's not like they had a gazillion effects or not, they just, 
really great miking, some good preamps, a little bit of EQ, great sounding amp, good sounding guitar, and amazing players. And that's how they got the sound. So it wasn't like, you know, maybe Mutt Lang might use like a lot of different things or or Mike Tashi or, or even Rob Rock, you know, like the Metallica Black Album and stuff, they used a lot of gear. Not, not in this case, no. You know, he did experiment with a lot of stuff and he did use a lot of room sounds and whatnot, but that's how they recorded the guitars. I, I saw, several times where they were recording guitars and that's that was what they were using so now i want to add uh, i want to add uh me i i did go ahead and add some cheese to this so this is the portion for you engineers so for you vocalists and you're not interested in engineer stuff then you could care less but check it out all i did was i added three different room sounds a tiny bit of delay and a, and, a, and a longer room. And the rooms themselves, I just shaved off all the low end. So it's just ambience to the voice. So the voices might, hopefully doesn't sound real bathtubby because I hate that sound. So I tried to EQ out of some of the kind of bathtubby sound. And then I, I just made, you know, the pre-delays a little longer each time so they didn't have any phase relationship and you can hear any phasing uh, between the reverbs themselves. But here, so I'm gonna put up the original first. And it's time to win back your love again. Now I'm just gonna do win back your love. Okay, that was the original. Here's mine. Here. To win back your love again. I will. Now, like I said, it may sound too much in a uh, uh, naked like this alone um, without the instrumentation, and it may be right. I kind of over exaggerate stuff so you can hear what I'm doing. I probably wouldn't add that much effect myself if I was making a record, but when you hear it in the track, a lot of that effect gets sucked up. Check it out. I'm going to do just the original vocal again, and then I'll put in mine. Here we go. To win back your love again. Okay, here's that one. Here's mine. To win Without it, I will. Okay, I'm gonna leave it without it again for a second. Here we go. With mine. Can bring back your love someday. I will. Without it. Big difference, right? Now, on more sensitive stuff, it's probably better to not have a lot of effect. Um, so maybe it is better to just leave things alone. But when the band gets bigger, it makes a big difference. So let me kind of do this again. Here it is alone without the track, or without, excuse me, without the affected tracks. Fight, baby, fight. To win back your love again. Okay, that's without. Now here's with, um, check it out. Here we go, sorry. Now here's with effect, check it out. And you guys may think it's nuts and you don't care, but check it out. had to do that anyway gang hopefully you're having as much fun as i've having doing these like i said i grew up on this stuff so maybe it's just got an extra special soft spot a spot in my heart uh but i just love listening to these tracks that i grew up on going wow 
how utterly amazing. Even with the carbuncles and the flat notes and this and that, I'm looking at it going, try to beat that. It's pretty tough. So definitely check out my version. It's in the description. See how I did. Let me know, man. Go ahead. You can give me talk smack about me. I don't care. You can put it in the in the in the comment sections. Tell me, but don't just talk smack. I mean, if I did good, say I did good. If I did nah, it wasn't as good as toss. <laughs> I'm not saying I am. So, but anyway, stick around, gang, for my next video.